Hi, Mom. Uh, so I got my ticket home from Europe. I get back on June 6th, but it's a really late flight because that was the cheapest, so it gets in at midnight. But don't worry, I'll get a shuttle from the airport so you don't have to pick me up. Like, really seriously, you don't have to. Okay, so love you. See you soon. Bye. June 7th, 1985, 1.15 a.m. Okay. Mm. Katie, I'm sorry I can't be there to see you, but it's impossible. Please, please don't go digging around trying to find out where I am. I don't want anyone, mum and dad, to know. We'll see each other again someday. Don't be worried. I love you, Sam. Okay. So, I have played this game before, but I played it a long time ago. So, I don't remember much of it. Um. So, yeah. And it's almost like I'm playing it for the first time because of my terrible memory. But I remember the last time I played this, I thought it was a horror game. <laughs> so the whole time I was just like on edge, like waiting and stuff jumping out at me. And it wasn't even a horror game. <laughs> Go back. Uh, goodbye, duck. Sorry, duck. Cool. Press L to check content or your backpack. Oh, no. Cool. Oh, look at that 90s hair. Hell yeah. Okay, and I got my key and stuff. Right, open door. Oof, it's dark. Oof. Cool. This is a scary house. I'd hate to be alone in this house. invoice. So I think they've just um, moved into here. This is a new house. Dear Katie, so much has changed, even just since you've been away. We moved into this house. I'm in a new school, and my big sister being gone for a year doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't feel real, but I'm not gonna let it phase me. I used to tell you everything, and if I can't do it in person, because you're off gallivanting around who knows where, I'll tell it to this journal, just like I was talking to you. Nope, 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 open back up. Directions to work from new house. Okay. Better stop for a poop. Turn on all the lights because this is spooky. That's where that goes. Katie's departure in 94. So she's been gone like a whole year. Like it's a year to the day. Sam, Daniel from the old neighbourhood called. He wants to come see the new house. Call him back. Mum, Daniel is a total weirdo. The only reason I ever hung out with him in the first place is he had a Nintendo when we were little. I mean, that's a good reason to hang out with someone. Phone. Oh. 
Okay. Mon bébé. Ah, Peke. Oh, il me spec. Damn it. C'est pas. Ok. Sam. Sam. Hello. Sam. Ooh, nice mustache. Press minus or X to check your location in the house. Okay. So I'm there. Cool. Oh. She pretty. I like her hair. Cool. Pack of cards. Mm, okay. This is Oscar Doc Mason. Oscar Mason, sixty of the Boone County, of the Boone County, of the Boone County, <laughs> died peacefully last month in his home. Mr. Mason was Mr. Mason was born on September eighth, nineteen thirty-three in the house that would be his home for the rest of his life. He attained his degree in pharmacy at a young age and returned to Boone County to practice. He quickly became a well-loved figure at the centre of the community. In the decades preceding his passing, he was seldom seen outside his home. The service will be held this Sunday at the First Methodist Church at 1pm. All are welcome. His survivors include his nephew, Terence Greenbrier. Greenbrier, is that how you say that? As well as in the spirit of the people the people of Boone County to whom he provided wellness and comfort. Rest in peace, sir. Oh, so this is so this is um his house I'm guessing. I think. Uh welcome, you shouldn't. We hope that you're as excited about your first day at Goodfellow High School as we are. Uh, please be sure to bring the following with you on your first day of class so that you get right into the swing of things. One sturdy folder with pockets for each of your six class periods. Check. One line notebook per period or one large notebook with six divided sections. Check. One, at least six pens, blue or black ink and six pencils. Check. One box of coloured pencils. Check. Standard combination lock for your assigned locker. Check. Nutritious lunch for $2.50 for our lunch provided by the school cafeteria. Check. A positive attitude. Please remember to get plenty of sleep the night before and be ready for the first bell, bell to ring at 8 a.m. See you soon and again, welcome. Beth Valens, Principal. Oh my god. You are so lucky you finished high school before we moved into this house. So, it's the first day of school, and there I am, introducing myself to the class, and I say that I just moved into the house on Arbor Hill. All of a sudden, every kid in the room turns and just stares like I suddenly transformed into a mutant. I just stood there, pushing pretty hard for a rewind button. Because now maybe nobody knows my name, but they all know who I am. The Psycho House Girl. Right. Another reason I thought this was a horror game is this is the Psycho House. Why would it be called that? Maybe we'll find out. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm all about wrecking this place. You get down there. It's where you go. You. You go. 
pick you. No! Pow. TV listen. Oh, the X Files. Boy Meets World. Bonnie Hunt. Um, Red Dwarf. Holy crap. Mark and Mindy. Robocop. <laughs> Attack of the Killer. Full House. So much good things in there. Oh. Cool. Sure. Go back. Cool. VHS. Oh my God. Remember having to rewind VHS? Nope, just me. Okay, I'm old. <laughs> what was that? It's that book that Dad wrote. Oh, the accident of saviour. November 21st, 1963. John Russell knows that the president's life hangs in the balance. But who would believe him? Not just another James Bond, T. Wales. Mummy. High class political thriller, Nicholas Wolfe removed Mercury Books. Oh, okay. Cool. Read like that. Terry, hey man, how have you been? I know you're a published author and everything now, but my editor at Hi-Fi Aficionado has too much review work to go around. He's looking for another freelancer. Naturally, I thought of you. You were saying in your last letter how much of a Pain it's been trying to find a publisher for your latest work of literature and writing stereo reviews is dead simple. Sit at home with a glass of scotch, listen to some records and write up how it sounds and then get paid. I've included some issues of the mag as, to use as, as examples if you're interested. Send some examples to my editor and tell him your old co college chum Mike sent you. Here's the address. Do it. Mike. Yeah, Mike, do it. No, not Mike, Terry. Do it, Terry. Oh. There's B to crouch. It's so dark in here, I don't like it. Why am I crouching? Ah. Water guys book. Eh, uh, no thanks. Bye. Soda can. Oh. No. You get over there. Away from me. Shrine. Oh, a book. The Haven at the Edge of the World, Samantha Greenbrier, Grade 2. Story The Turtle People, Part 1. Captain Allegra looked off at the ocean. It went on forever, or so it seemed. Someday she would find the edge and get to the paradise there. Then she heard a cannon fire. Boom! It was the Black Pirate ship. She yelled, I thought we lost them at Horse Island. The first mate said, looks like you thought too soon. The black ship came up along the side. Captain Black himself came out of the deck of the black ship. He yelled to Captain Allegra, you're never, you're never going to find the edge. There ain't no paradise. <laughs> I love the spell in the paradise. And your father were a liar. Captain Allegra yelled back, then why do you keep following us, you imbecile? <laughs> The first mate yelled out, We'll stop you, Captain Black. We'll find the edge of the world and you'll see her father was no liar. The battle kept going until Captain Allegra's ship got away. Now west, she said, and the ship sailed towards the sunset. Oh, I like that. There's part two. That was a good story.
Tiozinho. Opa. Não sei se eu sei, Bratmobile. Hi Terry, in close, please find a Pioneer CLDG703 unit with remote and cables. We need a half page review for the October issue, so that gives you about two weeks to get us the copy to edit. Standard stuff like you gave us on the CLDG502. It's a combi player, so check, so check its CD playback with a few discs, as well as laser disc, and they want us to definitely hit the signal to noise ratio and the tough link stuff for high end buyers. Looking forward to your take on it. Enjoy the unit. Cool. Is there more light in here? This room is very dark. So maybe you have to turn on the light for some stuff. Oh. Look. Making friends. Sam thought, that, thought this might help. Feeling lonely? It's a piece of cake to make friends. Never worry again about having friends to spend time with. This book will teach you to make friends even when you're shy. Will it now? You know that feeling where the first moment you see someone, it's like they have a big gold star around them and you have to get to know them? Well, there's this girl. I think she's a senior. She's usually dressed kind of punk. But sometimes I see her in this, like, army uniform. And she's always drawing in this notebook, looking so intense. I had no idea how I would ever, like, have an excuse to talk to her. Till I noticed she and her friends hang out and play Street Fighter at the 7-Eleven every day after school. My god, come on. You can't humble me. Anyway. Hey, are you the new girl, Sam? I'm Tommy. I'm at, I'm at the back behind you. Wave if you get this and write back. Hi, Tommy. Yes, I'm Samantha, and yes, I'm new. What's up? I just thought that since you're new, maybe you could use a friend. I don't have a lot of friends either, so I thought I'd ask something if you don't mind. Um, no, I don't mind. What do you want to ask? Was it just your uncle who went psycho or just it run in the family? Okay. So, was this, was someone murdered in this house? This is a horror game. Because... No, it's not. Uh, because United States Department of Ar Agriculture Oh, National Forestry Manual. Cool. Coupons. Save 25 cents. Why do I keep crouching? Okay. There's so many rooms to this house, jeez. It honestly looks like a big scary house. I'm I'm putting on every light. Oh, it's like a bar. Fancy. Oh, there's so much soda in this house. Get. Even colder. We just sign it. Oh my god. The menstrual cycle. Travels through the Colobian tubes over your releases at ovum. About two weeks later, since the lining of the uterus is not ready for a pregnancy, it comes out through the vagina. Well, I've learned a lot of stuff on you already. Ah, so it reproductive system. I am producing the testicles. Okay. Um. Oh, I want to read our essay. Hold on. 
a reproductive system when she was six, the menstrual cycle, and a villa, the early morning of September 1st, 1939. Essa Glatz stares out the window at the train as it is travel as it travels from Vienna back to her home village of Will Will in Poland. That made sense. That made sense as I said it. <laughs> As the train rumbles along and the sun rises over the countryside, she can only think of her dear Borislav, the boy she is engaged to wed. Meanwhile, deep within her guts, a novum starts to develop. Essa's train approaches its destination, her heart races. The lining of the uterus is getting thick and soft. As Essa steps off the train, her eyes dart quickly across the gathered crowd. Then there, her dear Boris. Still in his baker's smock, he must have dropped. He must have dropped his early morning duties at his father's shop to come meet her. Her heart skips a beat. The ovary releases the ovum. It travels through the fallopian tube. Am I saying that right? Ovum it must be over the wheezing of the steam engines. A deep hum grows. It's coming from the sky. Dark shadows pass over the station. A whistling sound. Essa had thought only. A second faster than the bombs reaches out towards her dear Boris across the crowd. Her eyes lock. The moment faces, flash and smoke envelopes envelopes him almost instantly. Um, in the assault by German forces, almost seventy five percent of the people in her hometown are killed. The rest, including Essa and for a time Borislav Hudelin a half destroyed church. He is blind. His legs are missing. Bandaged with torn bed sheets, Essa's egg will not be meeting a sperm. <laughs> Essa's egg will not be meeting a sperm. It, di it dissolves. About two weeks later, Boris loses a grip on life. Essa has given up on her rations to keep Boris alive. But in the end, nothing can save him. Since the lining of the uterus is not needed for a pregnancy, it comes out through the vagina. <laughs> Essa vows to survive. She sets off to join the Polish resistance as a daring spy and sab saboteur. Another ovum starts to develop in one of the ovaries and pr the process begins again. It is incredible how the female body knows how to prepare for pregnancy. <laughs> See me! <laughs> ah, I love that. Uh, dear Mr. Greenbrow, I write to inform you that unfortunately Mercury Books will be, be unable to publish your follow-up to the accidental pariah. Despite the low sales of the accidental saviour, we went ahead with the publication of the second book in hopes of the John Russell series catching on. However, sales of the second book have in fact been lower than those of the first, so our stewardship of the series must end here. It's been a pleasure working as your publisher, and we wish you and John Russell the best new future endeavours. Sincerely, Donald, Donald Brips. Publisher, make it books. Oh, that sucks. Bad second book. A message from our future saved the president's life once, but within the next 24 hours there will be another attempt, and the lines of communications are down. Oh, okay. That sucks. This book won't be published. Oh, it's got a lot of them. Oh, jeez. Read later. Samantha, please give this to your mother. Oh, damn it. When you live in one place your whole life, your next door neighbor is kind of like your default friend. And Daniel only got weirder over the years. So moving away has been a good excuse to, like, not see him anymore. But he did always have the good Nintendo games. Maybe I'll give him a call. Janice, thank you for having Danny over to your new home. He has missed having his friend Samantha in the neighborhood very much. Daniel asked if he could lend Samantha his Nintendo Street Fighting tape. I gave him my permission. He needs to spend more time. 
You need to spend less time with those games anyway. No hurry returning it. Let Samantha know that she is welcome back to her house to visit any time. Sincerely, Mary Schultz. 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 Okay. So much exploring to do in here. Okay, I think that's it for this room. Not bam. Oh. oh. Stop crouching. Katie, please tell mum and dad sorry about the stuff that's missing. Sam. Okay. Oh my god. Hi Lonnie, so if you want to come over to my house still this afternoon, that would be cool. I can drive. It's kind of far, but I can drive you home too, so hopefully that's fine. Right back and leave this in my locker if you still want to, and we can meet in the parking lot after six. Samantha. Yeah, I'm totally in. See you there. Then I'm going to kick your butt. Get ready. So you know what they say about the best light plans of mice and men? Yeah, it turns out it applies to Street Fighter too. At least I worked up the courage to walk into the 7-Eleven and ask for a turn, but all that practice at home did not exactly translate in the wild. So after I was finished getting my butt kicked, I followed them outside while they smoked. And that was when she asked me if I was that psycho house girl. But then she said she's always really wanted to see the psycho house. Her name is Lonnie. She's coming over tomorrow. Hey. Okay, please, wherever you found, don't tell mom and dad. They at it. Okay. So, something about the attic then. Where is the attic? The Killing of JFK, a theory. You have seen the movie. Discover the truth. Discover it. A superb work of speculation, plotted with amazing skill, showing a level of ma magnetic artistry not usually present in such academic pieces. In Trammell. A thrilling theory, I couldn't put this down. An important new look at circumstances around one of the greatest tragedies of our time. Oops. You can do better. Yeah, don't put pressure on yourself. Okay, let's get rid of this glass. Okay, now I feel better. Oh my god, this, oh, this is a review. They say that Jack of all trades is a master of none. I have to disagree. Mastery is not a question of specialization, but sureness of purpose and dedication to craft. If you happen to be in the market for a combination LD CD player, you'll be glad to know that Pioneer seems to share this particular. Go on. I want to know, I might want to buy one. Enter combination. Oh crap. Okay, I need to find a combo. Great. Boone County. Telephone directory. Oh, maybe it's that guy's date of birth. Hold on. Or when he died or whatever. Right, hold on. Where's that news clipping? Uh, 1933? September 8th, 1933? Okay, hold on. Let me try September 8th. Okay, I'm so scared of this game. <laughs> what the fuck? Ah, oh, 
much, just that. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Hold on, let me try 1933. Okay, let me try 89. No, okay. Oh, I totally freaked out there. From both ages. John Russell opened his eyes and saw them. The stars twinkling as if he were lying on the grass in his family's yard in, in Massachusetts. Even though that place was a million mi miles away. No. He blinked the sleep from his eyes looking through the carbon reinforced safety glass of the space station. Archimedes. Yes. He was a long way from home, but the future needed him. John Russell's head swam. He felt incredibly drunk, despite not having touched a drop in hours. He vomited onto his feet. Oh, done that before. His bare feet. He stared for a moment, processing his sick like toenails, scanning his bare shins, bare knees. He was completely naked. He looked up and met the eyes of a gorgeous blonde woman wearing a tight polymer fibre tunic. Then fabric that, the fabric that strained at the seams to contain her generous bosom was emblazoned with the phrase, matter transference operator. Then he passed out. You know that's a word I've not heard in a while, bosom, to describe boobs. Uh, John Russell had crossed the gap, the gap in time. Only messages had passed before, but now I'm, but now I'm a man. They needed him, now more than ever. Changing the past was no longer good enough. The instructions from the council had been clear. Uh, what to procure, what to construct, what what to con construct from it, how to assemble it so he made the machine, how to transport him bodily across time. This is so hard to read. And now he stood. There on the bridge of the Starg ship. Oh my god, Ash. There on the bridge of the Starg ship, Archimedes, command of the vessel, because only he who had saved the predestinate's life twice be before he could helm the naive crew to their destiny, the fate of the galaxy. Okay, I see why you're not getting picked up, mate. I see why your book's not working out. Because it's all over the place. Or you need a new typewriter. So what a scary noise is in this game. Sarah Hoffs. No, not gathering moss. 90210. Does anyone still care? <laughs> no, I, I know I don't. <laughs> oh, big. A stranger under my roof. Best selling advice book for a parent of teens. The teen years are fraught with change of all types, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. But these changes don't just affect your teen. Your teen's turbulent years are a challenge for parents as well. Maybe the biggest challenge you've yet faced since having children. This book holds insight into your teen's behaviour. From the very beginning, as he or she first enters adolescence, up through the end of teen years, as he or she enters, enters young adulthood. The practical strategies here are based upon well-tested principles of paediatric psychology, presented by Dr. Alyssa Medina, herself a mother of two teenagers. Prepare to gain new tools for establishing a productive, healthy and loving dialogue with the stranger under your roof. I've never had such a good conversation with my daughter. These simple tools can make all the difference to our relationship with the your child. Dr. Alyssa Medina Oh, she looks serious. She means business. Okay. How? You go down there. Yeah, so. 
here. Oh, let me let me out. Let me out. Oh, I don't think I looked in all these drawers, did I? Oh, something grab. Can I open it? No? Okay. Oh! It's a false bar. Turns. Green bright. 188. Um, 1888 Dry Creek Road. Oh my god. There's no way I could read that. What does that even say? Dear Terence, I write on what I hope and imagine is a joyous occasion. News reaches me that you are newly married to a wonderful young woman. I have more than a lot of time to consider my past, my family and my thoughts have often been have often hinged on your development and welfare in the ten years since we last met. Your marriage gives me much reassurance in this regard. You are always welcome to our house. I will understand if you feel you cannot accept this invitation. Yours very sincerely. Okay. Is there more to that? No. Nineteen seventy two, is that maybe the code? Oh my God. Okay, let me try 1972. Oh my god, I'm fucking this up, man. Seven. Who? No. Okay. Back to the drawing board. What's this? Nope, I wasn't. Okay, it won't let me do that. Those are my footsteps. <laughs> I thought someone was coming to kill me. Okay, I've been in that drawer, I think. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we can always come back here. Unless, did I? I don't think I checked everything in here, so I'm informed. Uh, black cat, like, oh, so this was wiring in houses technically up to safety and amperage requirements. Um, my system is pretty currently unpredictable, lights blank out for no clear reason, pressure on the floorboards and door frames disrupt circuits. Find the surface properly reworking electrical system. Okay. Okay. Let's go upstairs. Put on there's over here. Another closet. Ooh. Okay. Good fellow high school. Sweet. What the fuck is grab skull? Okay. That's cool. Oh, I like that. Echo on Mexico. Cool. I like it so much, I throw it away. Okay. What in this game is just exploring stuff? There was only four books in here. Please let me. Dear John, it's so good to hear from you again. 
All this new house business sounds like quite the adventure. Remember the little dorm room we shared freshman year when we were miserable uh, fantasising about our dream homes. I always said I wanted a mansion and you said you just wanted a house in the woods. Look who got both. Somebody, somebody up there likes you. I could use some of that magic. Send me some little numbers. I'll play them. Seriously, but I shouldn't be complaining about this good old spirit level we've had since Bob got transferred to Winnipeg. We just got new vinyl siding. Jealous yet? Let me know if you ever want to trade places. So how are the girls doing? Also, has Kate has Katie left on her big European adventure yet? Speaking of jealous, right back soon. I miss you, Rumi. Carol. Oh, hi, Carol. I got more track. Oh, I won this. Okay, Caitlin. Oh, first place in track. I'm a good runner. Yeah, yeah. First place, Jamie. What's this for? Oh, again, track and field. Nice. Yeah, yeah. What? Okay. Okay. Um. Boone County. Plumes of smoke will rise above the northeastern region of Boone County over the better part of next week. As part of a forestry service run controlled burn of overgrown sections of Flintock National Forest. Forestry crews have been preparing for the area for months. The burn operation will take place between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and possibly into Thursday, depending on speed of progress according to the forestry service. In addition to removing dead and overgrown vegetation that can lead to wildfires in drier months, the operation will serve as a valuable training tool for the forestry and firefighting personnel involved, said Senior Conservationist, conserv said senior conservationist wow, <laughs> Janice Greenbrier. Oh, that's my mum! Smoke will likely linger in the area through the weekend. Cool. Wait. Lights, please. Lights, please. I hate the dark. What's this? Personal calendar. Oh my god. Cooking class. Oh my god. Someone's, someone's busy. Grab coal. Why aren't these drawers open? What's that? Uh, notes of personal transfer. Bruce Pendleton to aid in the. Oh, right. So this is about the burn. To aid in the upcoming pres prescribed burn operation, a ranger with expertise in the procedure is being transferred to station at Flintock National Forest, effective 9294. Please see attached personal file. Personnel file, sorry. Over the overseeing officer at Flintock Forestry Station, Senior Conservationist Janice Greenbrier, is charged with the supervision of transfer personnel. The duration of transfer will be based upon performance evaluation as well as recommendation of the overseeing officer. Okay. Is set for Sam. Bratmobile potty mouth. Okay, do I keep this? No. It's weird hanging out with girls. Daniel was around ever since I was little, and other girls? I don't know. But being around Lonnie is like instantly just right. 
I gave her the grand Psycho House tour and took my revenge on Super Nintendo. And it was like, I don't know, I finally found someone I feel normal around. I drove her home and she gave me this tape and said, you have got to listen to this. I haven't stopped playing it since. Hmm. Yeah. To whom it may concern, I, Samantha Greenbrier, am 17 years old and therefore an independent, fully functional human being. The fact that you still forbid me from going into the city on my own is frankly absurd compared with Katie, who is only three, three years older than me, and yet you allowed her to go all the way across an ocean to another continent on her own. I just want to spend an evening in a normal, totally safe city on my own like a human being and since you may also remember that I have my own car now you can't really stop me or I'll run you over. Warmest regards to your daughter Samantha. Well didn't she get them told. Well done. Sam stop leaving every damn light on the house son. You're as bad as your sister. <laughs> oh I feel attacked. <laughs> I feel victimised. <laughs> Ooh. Rub cassette. Insert tape. Mm -hmm. We're so cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're so cool. We're so cool, yeah, yeah. Fuck you too, cool mom. Oh, hold on. Is that Ned Campbell? And she's in One Tree Hill. Her there. And Jodie Foster. She is in Nine Two One Zero, I think. I'm not sure who that is. And that... Who is that? I'm sure that's Nev Campbell. Holy crap. Right, okay, so... I haven't had that much to drink Jodie Foster. How many fingers am I holding up? You better not have been reading my secret diary again. Uh, here you go, Mitten. Have some patty. Gross. Okay, I'm gonna switch this one. So annoy me. Shush. Get. Right. The cartridge. Where does this go? This is a game. Oh, someone took the Nintendo. Red um, codes. Ch Chunli moves, fireball. Ah, right, okay, lightning kick, 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 kick. Got ya, okay. That's probably like the game. Useless, though. Scrutinise. Oh. Uh, I can't see nothing. And it hurts. <laughs> it hurts my eyes. Stare. Okay. Oh, there's smells like cartridges. Grab Steggy? Stelly? Ooh. Steggy! That's cute. Right, so I can. Oh, we know what happens to you. Pow. Right, so I've got two codes to find. 
and Patty Smith, Biohazard, Dinosaur Junior, Lemonheads, Ice Cube, March 1995, Eddie Vedder, Weezer. Okay. Oh, there's something under the mattress or under the bed. 1965. Brother, this is the one me and my dad are building. When I go for a ride when it's done. Okay. How many digits is that locker? Four. Um I wanna try ninety five. I don't know why. No. <laughs> Too easy, too obvious. Anything on the poster? May 7th. Mm, 0507? I'm just trying anything. Nope. 0705? No. I'm gonna find it. Grab board game. Got your number. Oh, did anyone have that game? What was it called? Where you had the phone and you had to like phone like guys or whatever. Who, who, who's got a crush on you? Hello, hugs. What was it called? I want to find that out. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on just a minute. Dream phone. Yes. Did anyone have that? I had that. Oh wait, no, I didn't have that. But one of my friends had it. Mitten. Um, oh, Mitten. 18... 1... 1888 Dry Creek Road. Is that maybe 1888? Man, Sam had this in fourth grade. Cool. Ah, <laughs> that's well cool. Anything in it? Can you open it? No. Plaque. Samantha. S is for special. A is for adorable. M is for merry. A is for affectionate. I thought A was for adorable. N is for nice. T is for thoughtful. H is for honest, A is for admirable, but I thought A was for affectionate, and then for adorable, what one is it? Can't have all of them. Nope, not how it works. Sorry. Open door. Ooh, I like her. Can make me read? Oh my god. King's Labyrinth, Chapter 2, Freeing Threads. Captain Allegra was still in her flowing skirt and sturdy jerkin, descended the single shining thread into the lower cavern of the labyrinth. She and the first mate, on their own now, grew closer to their goal, the throne room of the dead immortal king of the island. The first mate slid down the line onto the stone floor. She swept chalky bone dust from the front of her canvas trousers and looked up at Allegra. Silken thread, nigh unbreakable, thanks to the enchanting moths that inhabited the island, trailed behind, leading her way back to the entrance. From further into the labyrinth, a moaning began to echo. The moaning grew louder and clearer. It turned into words from some ancient language they could not understand. The king's cursed voice. The hairs on Captain Allegra's arms stood on end. She looked back at the first mate whose eyes remained locked in the blackness of the passage for a moment too long, before noticing the captain's gaze. The first mate nodded silently ahead. Following the king's ghostly song deeper and deeper into the labyrinth, they came upon a rocky gap spilling forth otherworldly blue light. Um, the great basin of the dead king's throne room lay below, skeletal in the rotted robes, the king was hunched over the blue orb topping his royal sceptre. Shadows of his bony fingers danced on the walls like ghosts. As he sang, wailing souls flowed in one by one through the cracks in the cave walls. Pulled into the orb, 
causing it to grow brighter and brighter. Behind the king, a long staircase hewn from rock led down into the chamber from the passage at the top. Allegra said, We have the advantage in numbers. I will draw his attention, and then you. But the first mate interrupted, No, I am smaller and quicker, and you know of dealing with mystic energies like these. I will circle to the other side. Get the t king's attention, and then lead him on a merry chase. She held up the silk line, all traced by this invisible thread, of course. Allegra said, It is a good plan, but perhaps we should go together. The first mate shook her head. Don't you know? You know this is our best chance. Don't be afraid for me. They grasped hands and exchanged three tight squeezes, their palms growing warm. The first mate tied the shiny thread to the be belt of her trousers, gave a quick salute and a wink, and dashed off. Allegra waited, staring vigilantly across at the top of the stairs where the first mate was to appear. The king continued his wait. No. No, the singing stopped. The king turned and began walking up the stairs. Allegra wanted to call out to do anything to stop the first mate from running headfirst into danger. She tried tugging on the line to signal her. No use. The king was nearly at the top of the stairs when the first mate burst through the passageway. She skidded to a stop. Even from across the yawning basin, Allegra could see the first mate's eyes grow wide. She turned and ran. Summoning his undead power, the king left the ground, levitating, gliding behind her with distressing speed. From the dank passage, much too far away, Allegra heard the first mate scream. She was already running towards the sound. The line in Allegra's hand was taut, then shuddered. It fell slack to the stone floor. As Allegra ran, she was gathering line, twisting it around her arm. She came to its end. The unbreakable thread dangled limply. Its end shredded and frayed in her hand. She tossed it to the ground. Ran, ran, ran. Oh. So many tissue boxes in this room. Sam, I think the creative writing track would be a project for you, Miss Black. Walk. No, I can't read that right in. Oh, this is a summer program. Okay. Um, good fellow, just now. Oh, oh crap. Mr. Blankley observed Miss Miss DeSoto wearing a t shirt with an unacceptable image on the front. A large beer can labeled. Perhaps blue ribbon? Miss DeSoto was sent to the guidance counsellor. We're wearing a t-shirt with a beer on it. Miss DeSoto was given the option to turn her shirt inside out, change into a shirt from her gym locker or be suspended for the rest of the day. Miss DeSoto chose suspension. Her father was called but there was no answer. No answering machine. Miss DeSoto must return as farm tomorrow. Signed by her father. I don't think she got assigned. <laughs> I don't think she cared. Getting Chloe Price vibes. Samantha Greenbrier, Year 11, Teacher Fletcher. Assignment Metal Working Engraving, Grade C minus. Not a challenging assignment, metal pla name plaque for family portrait, reasonable subject, but not complex. When I said that mom and dad should be replaced with parents' names, I did not mean just add them underneath. <laughs> Acceptable levelling on edges, show more pride and work. So I made that plaque. Cool. Oh, hold on. What is this? Good no. Hi Lonnie, I wrote this in first period and left it in your locker on the way to school. On the way to second, it's what all the cool kids are doing. Um, I've decided. Um, write me back. Also, here's an idea for something to draw. Two cats and a motorcycle. Hey, this is a good idea. What all the cool kids are actually doing is sending each other pages on their beepers. But we're cooler than them because guess what? They can't put this on their beeper. Uh, your drawing of cats are so good that I added a background to make it even better. Maybe I should just stick to writing though. Haha, <laughs> I like it. 
How did you know they were about to be abducted by aliens? I'm looking at Mr. Fish right now. I feel like he would probably have a lot of cats. Also, like a secret shame as he watches um, 90210 religiously. I'll ask him about it after class. He said he doesn't have cats and also that he's never watched 90210. But I could see in his eyes he was lying. Oh. This bathroom. Not stars if you have a boo boo. Nailed it. Oh my god. That's hair dye. It's not blood, it's hair dye. Wild colour. Sweet. Lonnie brought her hair dye over today. She said, I need to fix these roots. Think you could help? Dying hair is weirdly intimate. I don't know if I've touched someone else's scalp before. It's pretty intimate, right? Yes. It felt intimate. We looked into the mirror together after, and I expected her to say something about how it looked crappy or good or whatever. But that's when she said, You're so beautiful. Aww. And she was looking at me. Right in that moment, I wanted to say something, but I waited. And the moment was gone. Are they a mom? Hey Sam, do you want to see Pulp Fiction after school at the Coliseum? It came out last weekend and Todd won't shut up about it. So either it's good or we can make fun of him for liking it. My mum was supposed to cook dinner for us tonight for a change, but I could just ditch out on it probably. What time? Also, isn't that movie supposed to be really violent? Am I going to barf? According to Todd, it is pretty hardcore. I guess Uma Thurman gets stabbed in the heart with a heroin needle. So that's kind of hilarious. <laughs> also, something about cheeseburgers is important. Todd wants to see it again. 7.15, okay? Don't barf. <laughs> Alright, see you then. It's a date. Okay, so I've got two, I've got a file of cabinet to get into my locker. Postcard. Oh, London. Hey, Mum, Dad and Sam. I am in the channel. This is my second passage through the channel. I'm on my way back from London, the time going to Brussels, Belgium. Sorry I didn't write you on the way to London, but I was too excited about the channel. London was great. <laughs> Dad, I know you've always wanted to visit and I think you really should. You'd love it. If you all wanted to come back here as a family sometime, I guess I could be convinced. Love you all, Katie. The channel? Go through the channel. Oh, I'm standing too close to the door, so it's debatable. Put it back. Wait, is there anything under the Bible that I need? Yep, and Sam in business card. I know that's true. Okay. Earth, wind, and fire. Oh, I think Sam took a whole bunch of floors from me. Yeah. Mitten. Oh, mitten. Mitten. Our cat, Caitlin, age five. Oh. Did mitten die or something? Maybe that's a quote for a locker or something to do with mitten the cat. 
I need to find clues. We learn. Dear Jan, oh honey, let me tell you, I understand how you feel. Bob and I had have had our down periods. It's become a bit of a way of life, actually. You get used to each other. You live your own lives in the same house. The kids grow up, they go away. I'm sorry this isn't helping, is it? Don't worry. Terry will get over whatever's distracting him. Things will go back to normal. And as for Sam being distant, that's a teenager for you. Nothing to worry about. In the meantime, though, this controlled burn, that's, that sounds quite like the adventure. But let's cut to the chase. This new ranger they sent, that's what I want to know about. Ranger Rick? You have to be kidding me. It's too perfect. You have to tell me everything. And send pictures. Oh, she's thirsty for Ranger Rick. I want the whole package. Wait, that sounded wrong. <laughs> Keep your chin up until Terry is out his slump. And in the meantime, write more letters to your old friend, Carl. She adores them. That's cute. She seems like a good friend. Where's all these binders, man? Doesn't even let me look at them. Oh, Walt Whitman. Leaves of grass. Oh, that just reminds me of Breaking Bad. Hold on. Um, 1892. 1892. Oh, let me go try that. Hold on. I'll try that in the filing cabinet downstairs. 18. I didn't need this. I remembered it. 1892 No, 1890 Man, come on Okay, where was I? Oh, they took the bloody video player? I was going to say DVD player, but they, those weren't invented yet What's this? More color to eat. Boring. Please please. Cinnamon. Cool. And there's just so many rims. Jeez. Uh, after the honeymoon, we're discovering your spouse personally, spiritually, sexually. Oh, this is a shame on them, on the mum. I think the mum's a bit, like, I think because the dad, his book stuff's not going very well. He's just kind of distant and depressed and stuff, and that's affecting the marriage. That's not good. Blasters. Oh, people keep hurting themselves. I'm sure I'm missing lots, but... Katie, Mum and Dad were going to make up the guest room for you to stay in over the summer. They came home on such short notice that they weren't allowed to do it. You can use my room if you want. I won't be needing it anymore. Ooh, a dingy room. Position book, post hunter journal, sighting. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, August thirty first, nineteen forty four. A tall shadow in the upstairs hall. When I rounded the corner, no one was there. How tall was Uncle Oscar? No, I was not wearing my glasses. September third, nineteen forty four. Twelve forty four a.m. Nineteen ninety four. Nineteen forty four. Jeez. A faint voice coming from the bottom of the stairs. I said hello. 
could not investigate. Probably was the furnace. September 9th, 4.11pm. Poured milk from the carton in the fridge. It was spoiled. Pretty sure I read that spirits can sour milk. Milk was just bought yesterday. Ooh. Ooh. Also was milk. 11.24pm. Lani says she feels a presence in the TV room. I suddenly begin to feel cold. We build a protective pillow fort. Oh, that's what the fort was. 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. Lani and I employ a Ouija board as a medium. The server messages are conveyed from the other side. Oscar is definitely here. Um, October 28th, 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Enlisted Lani to stay up all night and help patrol premises, recording any signs of otherworldly presence. Lonnie reported many sightings, but all remained unconfirmed. Possibly ectoplasm and attic, probably leaky roof. Sample taken just in case. Despite due to our best efforts, we both fell asleep around 4 a.m. All in all, a successful night. Okay. This is all my stuff. Starting to get stuck. Okay. Oh, my God, Jonas. Oh, evaluation. Ranger part of March has been indispensable during the course of the prescribed burn preparation and execution. I believe his expertise dedication has been deciding factor in the successes of a very complex and challenging conversation conservation effort. In the opinion of Flintlock Forest staff Rick's contribution to daily operations have become essential to the outfit's continued success. To this end I will formally I will be formally submitting paperwork requesting his permanent reassignment to this facility. Okay. Halloween show. Don't forget your costume. The misfits. They're awesome. Studio lounge. 10.29pm. Okay. Sometimes you just have to lie to mom and dad. Like when Lonnie asked me to see a band with her and stay over at her friend's place in the city after. That's a lie to mom and dad's situation. But it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just so loud and real and awesome. And everybody was moving together like one huge tide of sound. Between two songs, Lonnie leaned over and said, how do you like your first show? I was so happy. I felt tears starting in my eyes. And then she up and hugged me. I think she could tell. No. Holy crap, I was in the library and I noticed something in the corner. I found a secret passage and it had Oscar's creepy old stuff in it. Ooh. Okay.
for some. Some start from, to not in or when red lights are on. Okay. In the closet. There's open kind of <gasps> spooky. I remember this bit really scared me. Goes on our Sam only secret house investigation log. Hidden compartments. Found three library upstairs for you. Evidence of the supernatural is discovered table. The search continues. Okay. Um there's one outside your room. Okay. Ah okay. I hate that thunder. Right, so. Private, do not read. Oh my god. A lever in her scouting party peered down warily through the dense canopy of rustling leaves from their perch high in the forest branches. Mere feet away, sunlight shone brightly off the inner ice walls of the glacial basin in which the forest grew. It was just a strange sight indeed, such lushness juxtaposed with the frigid ice formations. Illico jumped forward without hesitation, bounding through the high branches. The first mate had been captured by the Green Glacier's Amazonian tribe. His life hung in the balance. We have to hurry. Illico's party followed behind, moving quietly as the breeze through the quietly as a breeze through the greenery. Allegra landed in the clearing and shouted, Stop! She saw the Queen Amazonian up on her pedestal, reaching for the lever that would drop her first mate into the bat below. She shouted, No! and flung her saber at the Amazon's reaching hand. But it was too late. The first mate screamed as he fell toward the water, then splashed down. That was an always eerily silent. Allegra looked on, frozen in fear and remorse. She had been a moment too late. But then, from the vat, something began to emerge. A head of dark brown hair, just like the first mate's. Then the shoulders and sleeves of his coat, soaking wet. But as the figure stood and the water poured down, Allegra saw that it was the first mate that changed. He was no longer a man at all, in fact. But looked back at her with the eyes, the face, the hair, and the hands of body of a woman, still in first mate's clothes. Still, the first mate... He, she, spoke in a soft, clear voice. Captain, the Amazonian queen said she is one of us now. She is ours. Allegra drew, drew her magical flintlock pistols from her belt and her crew readied their swords. Allegra glared into the queen's eyes and said, That's the love of my life and you can't have her. Oh, okay. Oh, is this maybe um, property of Sam? Oh, so I think half of Sam's locker combo. Yes! Okay. Um, hell yeah. There was another thingy. There's apparently another panel. Yes. Oh. No. No. Did. Did. Whoa. Okay. Hello? Hello? Where are you? Oscar. What do you want to come back? Okay. He wants to come back. Yes. So what was right? No. 
zero five zero one. Cool. Zero. No. Zero. Five. Zero. One. Yes. Okay. Oh, she is. She looks like Haley Williams. Lonnie came over today, but everything was different. She was sitting at my desk chair, and she wouldn't look at me. Finally, I asked her what was going on. She said she felt like she'd done something She's wrong that doing... night in the city. Like I must think. But I said no. There was nothing wrong. I just wanted to say, but I couldn't find the words. I felt like I was going to cry, but I wasn't sad. She got up and sat next to me on the bed. I looked at her. Lonnie, do you think you could ever... And that's when she kissed me. <laughs> Such a shame, like being gay in the nineties. It's not like being gay in nineties. Special Shannon Dory. Okay, Jillian. Is that Jillian Anderson? No, I don't think it is. Is there a... Yeah, like... What's I saying? Yeah, being gay in the 90s was probably was really hard. Like, not as accepted... Not as accepted as, as it is now. Like, it's not much better now. Still get homophobes and stuff, but in the 90s it was way worse. Oh, I got a key. Does that go in here? No. I forgot I got a key. Basement. Okay. Let's go to the basement. Is the basement going to be scary? Read note. Dear Samantha, I would like to cordially thank you for having I would like to cordially thank you for having me to your abode for the Thanksgiving holiday with your lovely family. I enjoyed the flavorful potatoes and also it was weird being around your parents for that long. But it was pretty funny how impossible it is for your dad not to be awkward for more than thirty seconds at a time. Very cordially yours, your close friend and confident, confidant, confident, confidant, Lonnie D. Fancy man, quite. Dear Miss DeSoto, allow me to take this opportunity to thank you in kind for being such a gracious host with the festivities at your father's estate, following the aforementioned meal with my parents. Your family's Thanksgiving base was the more enjoyable of the two events, I must say. I especially appreciated the time I spent with your grandmother, who is a lovely woman with sterling taste and a refined air. Let's do it again. Same time next year, shall we? Indeed. Madame Samantha Greenbrier Esquire. So posh. Mm. Oh, isn't it? Oh, look at that little mouse. It's cute. It's different now. I mean, we still hang out all the time like before. But now when no one else is around... Well, you know, 
So you could say we're dating, but it's secret. Secret dating? I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the real difference. Now when we get off the phone or go home for the night, or it's just quiet and we're alone, we say I love you. Oh. Cute, man. Oh man, one of my old texts. Oh, it's the same thing. Oh, she she did it properly. Hold on. Oh wait, is that see, it's incredible how the female body knows how to prepare for a pregnancy. Oh, did she copy that? Right, so um, Samantha copied that homework but just worked it into a story so it wouldn't be obvious that it was copied. That's clever. K is for kind, A is for amazing, I is for intelligent, T is for talented, L is for lighthearted, I is for important and also intelligent, N is for nice. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. I feel like there should be more. Oh, I almost missed this. Uh, dear Samantha, congratulations. I am pleased to inform you of your admission to the Creative Writing track of the Reed College Summer Programme for Young Scholars for its 1995 session. We believe you have much to contribute to the Reed College community. Based on your portfolio and academic record, I am pleased to offer you financial aid to cover 75% of the summer programme's tuition and fees. The attached documentation delineates your schedule, optional secondary track choices and your dormitory assignment. Please remember to submit the attached form if you wish to be eligible for one of the three Reed full-time undergraduate scholarships to be awarded to exemplary students at the end of the summer program. We very much look forward to your attendance. Again, congratulations on your admission and best wishes from us all at Reed College. I'm so stupid sometimes. I was telling Lonnie that I got into my college summer program thing. And I was all making plans like, you should come visit me, stay in my dorm room. But she said, Sam, I ship out on June 6th. I was like, ship out? To where? She said, to basic training. What did you think I was doing all that ROTC stuff for? I guess she's been planning to join the army right after high school since she was like, 12. And I guess she's really going to do it. So I was like, after graduation, I'm just never going to see you again? She said, let's just have fun while we can. Hmm. Chip D. So there's a note on this thingy. Terence, thank you for sending along a copy of your newly published book. An author's first published manuscript is a momentous occasion. I read it this afternoon. I certainly recognise my son in the subject matter. An author's work is the externalisation of that which he holds dear and that which he fears. And in this respect, I believe your work was successful. But the lens through which the personal of Sean was needlessly clouded by genre cliches and implausible dime store science fictional uh, diets ma machina. I can't I can't say words or read words. I'm sorry. Um. Um. The great authors speak of their lives. Million. That in clear and honest tones, the lens crystal that refracts their thoughts without distortion. I congratulate you on surviving the great ordeal that is publication. And rest assured that rest assured that readers of your chosen genre will lap up 
oopsies hungrily. <laughs> Copies. That <laughs> doesn't say oopsies. <laughs> I'll laugh up oopsies. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Oh my god. Right, I congratulate you on surviving the great ordeal that is publication. Rest assured, I can't take this seriously. And rest assured that the readers of your chosen genre will lap will lap up copies, copies, and oopsies hungrily. But I urge you to shed our device. You can do better with the father's love and encouragement. My dad wrote that. Oh, what dick. Oopsies. It will lap up oopsies. It will lap up oopsies. Alright, okay. So, I came in here. I went in there. I read the book. I said the oopsies. When it wasn't oopsies. Oh, cool. Citizenship. Nice. Cool. Oh, do you think any of this would be like the code for the filing cabinet? Date of birth. 1950. Postcard. Oh, pretty. Hey Sam, I'm writing to you from. I can't read that. Multnomah Falls. I'm here on a stupid class trip, which is stupid because it's March and I don't know if anyone running this school has been to Oregon, but it's cold and rainy as shit in March. Wish you were here. Oh, wait, you are here because I'm writing this to you in the gift shop. Oh shit, here you come. Oh, that's cute. They tell you to stick with the group on field trips, Katie. There's a reason for that. Lonnie and I snuck off on the side paths at Multnomah Falls and got a little lost. Okay, a lot lost. Like, for hours. Right before the bus left, we found a trail and came running down the path, soaked and covered in mud, shouting for the bus not to leave. The school called home. Mom and Dad said, you didn't get into trouble like this before you met that Lonnie girl. But I don't think they know, no, about us. The kids at school, though, I'm really afraid that's a whole other story. Stick with the group, Katie. Stick with the group. Bratmobile. Oh, wait. Well, let me start right. Done. What one's the first one? The Psycho House Girl. The coolest stuff I've ever read about being a Psycho House Girl. Cool thing one. Everybody in the hall thinking you don't know they're looking at you and whispering as you walk past because I guess they haven't heard of peripheral... Costumes, skeletons and devils. Cheerleaders from the smells. Big Teen Spirit video. Costumes, skeletons and devils, cheerleaders from the Smells Like Teen Spirit video, one girl dressed as Jackie Kennedy. That's a lie to mum and dad's situation, but it was so worth it. The girls on stage were so loud and real and awesome, and that everybody moving together like one type of sound. Oh, that's from the journals. Okay. Uh, Miss Greenbrier, I appreciate the time and effort you put into your letter. The showed initiative and was well written. It does not change my mind on this matter. While I understand that Miss DeSoto is a friend of yours, the fact of the matter is that she defaced girl property with profanity. The fact that she allegedly defaced her own locker in retaliation for another shouldn't do the same to yours is immaterial. As to your complaint that no other student has been punished for their part in this incident, the fact is that no guilty party has come forward. And there has been 
and there has been no convincing evidence as to who might have defaced your locker. In other words, there's no one to punish. I would suggest letting this issue drop as it will only bring more unwanted attention on yourself, which I believe is what you claim began this whole incident in the first place. Principal Sheldon Bosman. Shut up, Sheldon. I don't get Lonnie sometimes. Like, her band, and our zine, and her hair, and everything are all anti-authority. But I watch her in JROTC, and she's doing drills in perfect formation. Following orders, no question. And there's all this stuff in the news about don't ask, don't tell. Like, she's going to join the army and then have to lie? About who she is? She said they don't need to know what they don't need to know. Like it was no big deal. This from the girl who trashed her locker to, like, defend my honor. I've learned when to stop arguing, though. I don't think Lonnie even gets Lonnie sometimes. Taking against the patriarchy, the great Goodfellow riot of 95. Well, Ooh. Heard enough, had enough, ready to join a revolution and take a stand against Grossman and the patriarchy. Fight back, Captain E. Um, Rev one, revolution girl. Maybe you just want more cool zines or maybe even a mixtape. Send her your missives. Send us your missives from the Girl Riot Underground. Heel box 8771. Cool. Where am I? I don't know where this is. Where am I? Um. Ah, okay. Which? Um, oh, John, or shampoo, set, colour, perm, manicure. Oh, jeez. There's so many secret passages in this house. Stop. Earth, wind, and fire. Cool. The skull was the coolest thing I found in Mexico. It was like three bucks. I love it. Merry Christmas. Miss you. Oh, that was from um, Lonnie. That skull I just chucked about like it meant nothing. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> cool. Samantha. Oh, disciplinary. Dis distributing inappropriate materials on school grounds. Phone call to students' parents. Out of school suspension. Oh man. Sam, since you refused to hear us out this afternoon, your mother and I are putting this in writing so that we are absolutely clear. You are grounded for the net for the rest of the month from social and telephone privileges. And fr from using your car for anything, except going to and from school. We understand that you're what you're going through, but we can't allow you to continue with this kind of behaviour at school. Clearly, once your privileges are reinstated, we can't allow you to have your bedroom door closed while Lonnie's in the house. This is the last word on the matter. Get back on course so this won't happen again, Dad. I had an interesting talk with mom and dad tonight, one you were never going to need to have. I mean, you've known, right? I've known. 
I've known since, like, She-Ra. Mom and Dad didn't, I guess. But they saw the zine and the stuff on the locker, and they were like, is there something we should know about you and Lonnie? And so here's the thing. I was prepared for them to be mad, or disappointed, or start crying, or something. But they were just in denial. You're too young to know what you want. You and Lonnie are just good friends. You just haven't met the right boy. It's a phase. That's what I didn't see coming. That they wouldn't even respect me enough to believe me. Well, joke's on them. Because they're in for one very long phase. That sucks, man. Be there. First off, congratulations, Janice Regional Director. And I say congratulations because, come on, you're going to take the job, right? What are you waiting for? An engraved invitation? Call them back. But in the meantime, let's discuss this little outing you had with our favourite flannel clad hunk. What a blast. But you sound like you, you're needing a, reading a lot into an innocent night out. You're sure there's something there? You said he has an out of town girlfriend. You're sure they're not serious? Okay, so we have to figure out when we'll see each other next in person. Enough with the letters. I owe you a congratulatory... Congratulatory... I owe you a congratulatory... 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 Margarita, boss lady. Soon, Carol. I could not say that word. What the... In my defence, her writing sucks. <laughs> it's very hard to read. Especially words you can't read already. The accidental warrior. Don't. The accidental warrior. Don't give up on the sunny. Accidental warrior, even. Hey. Yeah. Where have I been? Right, I've been in there. I need to go in then. Here. Samantha and Daniel were in the woods one day. It was sunny and they were on the on a an a venture. But they went to the bad part of the woods and it got dark. Daniel said, Are you scared? So Samantha said, No. Are you? They They laugh and wait more into the bad part. Then they went to a part that was never. I cannot read this. Daniel finally came over to get his game. I'd been dreading it. But he brought this story with him that I wrote when we were little. I started reading it. And then there I was, crying at the kitchen table. He asked what was wrong, and I was thinking about how we used to be friends, how much I'd taken for granted. But instead, I told him about school, and Dad, and Lonnie. And then how sorry I was that I wasn't his friend anymore. He gave me a hug and said it was going to be okay. For some reason, I almost believed him. That's nice, eh? For Dorothy, reconnected, that's nice. Eh, yeah, Sam's schedule working at Karen Burger and Bethel Road. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 3 to 7, Saturday, 12 to 6. Helen. Jonathan Blair. Alright, okay. Someone's getting married. There's so much pizza in this house. Like pizza boxes. Uh, Greenbrier. Having received your formal acceptance letter, I write to congratulate you on your new position as Regional um, Conservation Director of the State Forestry Service. We wish you luck in your final weeks at Flintlock National Forest and very much look forward to welcoming you 
to New Desk in the State Forestry Office at 8 a.m. May 1st. From Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. Hey. Just a bunch of snacks. Just a bunch of mugs. I could throw them about, but I'm not going to. Oh, a new cassette. Oh my god. First, let me do a muscle green brown. First let me say that I hope this missive finds you well. Hell, it feels like a goddamn miracle that it finds you at all. Do you know how long we've been trying to track you down? Worry not, we aren't the feds, the men in black or any other sort of creeping fascists, hobgoblins. In fact, we're on your side. Let me start from the beginning. Unknown Dimension is what you might call a specialist publishing house. We traffic in the weird, the ahead of its time, the lost but not forgotten but by a small but dedicated group of plug-in bibliophiles type out their mass market shunning visionary expression that refuses to be taken on anything but its own terms. We've had unparalleled run since our inception four years ago, unearthing and reviving Christ or zombie like timeless works such as N.M. Bestman's message of the of the snake men. It's inside me by <laughs> Jess Keller and Emil Krieger's off band Venusian Venusian flesh traders. Have you ever, but ever since we discovered tattered copies of your accidental series at a church rummage sale in Long, Bran Long Branch, New Jersey. We've been trying to track down the author of this weird and dark American outsider art. It's just the kind of forgotten portal into the 20th century civilizations, anxieties, delusions that our readers lose their minds over. James Bond and Harrison Ford might be the dick swinging heroes that modern suburban America wants, but John Russell. Male mannered insurance agent by day, reckless history revising sociopath by night, is a twisted peacekeeper that it deserves. It is our mission to bring him back to life. Okay, so I've typed plenty. What do we want from you? We want your permission to reprint the work since your original publisher, Mercury Books, folded a decade ago. They, we want you to supply a new foreword for the books to appear in brand new editions of The Accident of Saviour and The Accident of Pariah to be produced by Unknown Dimension as a limited run and marketed directly to our highly discerning customer base. And we want to offer you a portion of the proceeds. Contract to follow assuming you're interested in coming along with us on this weird odyssey. We look forward to embarking with you and to thrusting your work screaming back into the sweating palms of an unsuspecting American public. It's about time. Blast off. Okay. Odd. But he's going to get his book published, so that's good. Right? Sam, my mother and I will be away for a long weekend celebrating our anniversary, 3 to 7. We will be camping in the gorge, but we will give you a call. Oh, what's her anniversary? Sorry, the kitchen is still mid-renovation. Never trust a contractor. $40 is on the table to order a pizza, but we'll be gone. Good. Yeah, be good, Dad. Oh, their anniversary. That might be the code. Um, I need to find... There was a calendar somewhere. There was a calendar. Okay, hold on. Anniversary trip, Rick's wedding. Where's her actual anniversary then? 
when did they get married? I don't know if it's an anniversary trip or thing, because that's like three days long. That won't equate to a four digit code. So, it's cool. It's cool. I sent this one from I missed that bit. So. Oh, jeez. Holy, holy crap, man. How am I meant to fucking read that? Let me move into a light place. A place with light. Let me put this light on. Hold on. Okay. Brush over. Oh, come on. Where the hell did it go? What the hell? Okay, guys, we're not reading that one. <laughs> um, that just disappeared. Okay. Oh. Bit of that Girl Scout. Going away show for Lani. Last show ever. Saturday, June 3rd. Okay. Lani had her going away show with her band tonight. She's so incredible on stage. When she was singing, I could practically forget everything. That we only had 48 hours left. That I don't know what comes next. That I can't live without her. Then she dedicated the last song to me. And I couldn't take it. I was out on the curb in the alley, sobbing till my ribs hurt. I would follow her anywhere, Katie. But I can't. Where she's going. After a long time, she found me. She said she was sorry. She said, I wish things could be different. I just wanted to make you happy. I said, I don't think you can anymore. Cool. Wow. Because I can't tell you what a joy it is to see John Russell back in print. Thank you very much for sending along copies of the new editions. The cover art is really something. I know you've said that Unknown Dimension isn't in the business for printing new material, but this revived interest in my work has brought a wave of inspiration, resulting in a manuscript that contemplates John Russell's journey, which I think you may find intriguing. It's reflective and introspective without forgetting the excitement and weirdness that Unknown Dimension readers expect. I hope this might be an exciting new direction for Unknown Dimension to pursue. At the very least, I'm grateful that John Russell's adventures didn't come to an end quite when I thought they had. My thanks and regards, Terence L. Greenbrier. Cover copy. It has been almost 20 years since John Russell heard the call. Twice he saved a president's life. He'd practically forgotten the days of the future, of danger and excitement, and the days were where he mattered. So when that familiar rip in time opens in front of him and his handlers peer out, he doesn't hesitate. Is a president in danger? No. The life you save this time will be your own. Mm. I think that might be inspired by his life. In some form. Matt. Where will we do it? Where will we do it? Under stair secret door. <gasps> oh, midnight, June 5th. Final preparations are complete. We agreed our last night together would be our happiest ever. And we'd forget tomorrow was going to come at all. It worked for a while. We had a good time seeing Oscar off. 
then ran up to the attic to look through our photos, to find one for Lonnie to take with her. And looking at them, I realized they were all in the past, and there wouldn't be any more. I didn't know what I was going to do, and I cried, and she held me. She said she knew it was hard, but life would move on. Space. I said I didn't want my life to keep moving without her. That's when she cried too. I was so exhausted. I must have fallen asleep like that, in her arms. In the morning, I woke up, and I was finally alone. I was going to under the stairs actually. So there's a secret place. Oh. Attic. Oh, I got the attic key. Fuck yes. Fit burning. The sunset light in this house is the saddest thing I've ever seen. I just want to sleep. When I'm in the attic, it almost feels like Lonnie could still be here. She's just downstairs. I'm just waiting to hear her pull down the hatch and come running up. Maybe I'll go up to the attic. Maybe and wait. I'll try to summon him. Tag. His name tag. Okay. Chop. Ah, oh, they're trying to summon him. Okay. Right. I've got the attic key, but I'm not going yet because I've got one more thing to open. And I will not let. I will not go to the attic until I've opened that fucking cabinet. I'm determined. And here's oh, giant fucking letters. Would that be the code? Hmm, giant bloody letters. Um, your turns. David asked me to write you regarding the reviews you've been submitting the last few months. Frankly, they're becoming more trouble than they're worth from an editing standpoint. They're not, there's a word limit. It's your job to stay under it, not to, not mind to cut back to it. Even then, it's becoming harder and harder to weed out the tangents and non sequiturs from the unusable copy without heavy rewrites. The, room of, the readers of home theatre aficionado want to hear about the quality of, and value of the hardware, not ruinations on your childhood. If it were up to me, I wouldn't be writing this letter. I'd just be cutting you loose. There's tons of guys half your age who will take half your week to write stuff I could actually use. But Dave has known you for a long time, and he's the boss, so I'm giving you one more shot on his say-so. You should write him a nice note, thanking him for his patience and generosity. Look through your old stuff and start submitting reviews like that again. Then everybody will be happy. Brent Cartwood. Oof. Okay. Oh four five one. Oh four five one. So it sounds like this guy like when he's writing the reviews, like he's just getting back into like he's just used to writing novels. He's not used to just writing reviews. By the way, what a mess I've made. Just chucking shit about. Right. Uh oh four five one. This better be it, or I'm gonna start throwing more cups on. <laughs> I 
Yes. That whole fucking thing. Dear Mr. Mason, please find and close your original document and type copy for your records. The note raised copy has been filed at our offices. Thank you for entrusting our firm with this important matter. Will and Testament. I, Oscar Mason, processing full competence of mind and memory and after full survey of valued items to my name, do hereby declare this document my last will and testament. The following shall hold true upon my passing. I declare that I am a lifelong resident of Boon County. That I am unmarried and have no children. I declare that I have no outstanding debts to my name, to any creditors, living or dead. I do hereby bequeath every item of value of which I may die possessed, including the dwelling and surrounding acres located at Arbor Hill, as well as any and all personal property and moneyed accounts, to my nephew Terence L. Greenbrier Jr. of Ellis County. In the event that said Terence L. Greenbrier Jr. should predecease me, then and in, and in such an event, the bequest to him shall fall, and the same is bequeathed to his children as ordered by age and confidence as steward of the estate. I subscribe my name to this will this 13th day of August 1973. Yeah. Oh my god. Alright, that's just a handwritten version. Okay. Oh. Okay, so that basically just told me what I needed to know. I didn't really need to open that. So I guess I could go to the attic. Attic time. Attic. Okay. Sam, I'll always remember what we had. Stay strong, kick ass, I love you. No, they broke up. Oh, you can see the tears on them. Oh my god. Katie, I, I fell asleep in the attic, in Lonnie and my old spot, and I missed the first two calls. I just barely caught the third one before the machine got it. And it was Lonnie on a payphone. She'd been on the bus to basic and she said she couldn't she couldn't think of anything but me and us and that she couldn't go through with it with the army and being a part and all of it. And so she got off the bus in Salem. She said, "Sam, I want you to pack up everything you can and get in your car and come find me. And let's just drive until we find somewhere for us." And she asked me if I could do that. And I said yes. Yes. These pictures are so pretty. Oh, that's our uniform. I don't want to miss anything. Spot paper. No. Yep, so her and Lonnie have run away. Which is sweet, but probably not, not, not good. Letters to Katie. Oh, the, so these are all the things throughout the game. Katie, I'm so sorry that I can't be there to see you in person. That I can't tell you all this myself. But I hope as you read this journal and you think back that you'll understand why I had to do what I did. And that you won't be sad. And you won't hate me. And you'll just know that I am where I need to be. I love you.
love you so much, Katie. I'll see you again. Someday. Love, Sam. Like, I grew up in the 90s, so it's so nostalgic to me. Um, I love uh, the other. I keep forgetting the name. Sam. I, I love Sam and Lonnie's little love story. It's so cute. Yeah, I love their story. Um, obviously, being gay in the 90s is very different to being gay now. I'm not saying it's better now, because it's definitely not, but yeah, it's, I feel like it was harder to come out and it was less common to come out in the games, and definitely less accepted. Cats! There was cats in the beginning of this? <laughs> okay, there was a cat called Orange, I just saw. Okay. Yeah, but, um, and I loved how you, like, found the story out through kind of, like, letters and notes and stuff. Hey, you had to kind of piece the story together. I didn't understand why it was called the Psycho House. I think I kind of missed something there. I don't know. I was like, did, um, did someone get murdered? Did the uncle murder someone? Or what? Um, or is that haunted or what? Yeah, I, didn't, I, I think that part went over my head. And I liked um, the kind of sort of storyline uh, showing the dad's book like his troubles with getting his book published and stuff yeah i love it i find it actually quite a relaxing game actually it's quite a chilled game i don't know what else to say about it i just really enjoyed playing this and i would like i would play it like a hundred times over probably knowing me um yeah i can't believe i used to think this was a horror game when i first played it <laughs> i was just always waiting for something to jump out at me and it never did so um yeah but yeah i definitely recommend this game especially if you were kind of like grew up in the 90s and stuff like it's very nostalgic to play anyway uh thanks for watching i really enjoyed playing this as i've said a million times now but i definitely recommend it it is on the switch um, I'll try and find the price, the prices for it and I'll put it up here somewhere and I think it's on Steam as well so yeah anyway uh, thanks for watching bye